The 911 call of Omar Mateen, the Pulse nightclub shooter slash terrorist, was released yesterday. So let's listen and then we'll discuss. Hello there. Hi there. This is Orlando Police. Who am I speaking with, please? You're speaking with the person who pledged the allegiance to the Islamic State of the Republic of Iraq. Okay. Um, can you tell me where you are right now so I can get you some help? No, because you have to tell America to stop bombing Syria and Iraq. They're killing a lot of innocent people. So what, what am I to do here when pe my people are getting killed over there? You get what I'm saying? I, I do. I completely get what you're saying. What I'm trying to do is prevent anybody else from getting killed. Stop the U.S. airstrikes. They need to stop the U.S. airstrikes, okay? I understand they that. They need to stop the U.S. airstrikes. You have to tell the U.S. government to stop bombing. They're killing too many children. They're killing too many women. Okay? I understand that. But here's, here's, here's why I'm here right now. Now. I'm with the Orlando police. Can you tell me what you know about what's going on tonight? What, what's going on? Yes. That I feel the pain of the people getting killed in Syria and Iraq. Okay. So, so have you done something about that? Yes, I have. Can you tell me what you did, please. No, you already know what I did. Well, I'm trying to, to figure out how to keep you safe and how to get this resolved peacefully because I'm not a politician, I'm not a government. All I can do is help individuals, and I'm going to start with helping you. By the way, there's, there's some vehicles outside that have some bombs to let you know. Your people are going to get it, and I'm going to ignite it if they try to do anything stupid. Okay, I, under, I understand that, and I'll pass that along. Can you tell me what vehicle? Because I don't want to see anybody get hurt. No. But I'll tell you this. It can take out a whole city block almost. I, I understand that. Tell me, in the club, do you have any injured people with you that you brought with you? I'm not, I'm not letting you know nothing. Well, I'm trying to offer you help. Well, you need to know that they need to stop bombing Australia and it off. The U.S. is collaborating with Russia, and they're killing innocent women and children, okay? I don't care what you're saying. My homeboy, Tamerlan Sarnaya, did his thing on the Boston Marathon. My homeboy, Munir Abu Samha, did his thing, okay? So now, it's my turn, okay? Yeah, yeah, so that's tough to listen to, especially knowing exactly what he wound up doing. Uh, so many people died that night. So many people died. So he keeps saying it over and over. Stop bombing uh, Syria and Iraq. Stop bombing, stop bombing, stop bombing. You're killing innocent people. I can't get over how stupid that point is because you're saying you're so bad for killing innocent people that now I'm going to be just as bad and kill innocent people. It's so bad that I'm I'm gonna do it. What? I thought you said it was bad. <laughs> but yeah, well, when you do it, it's bad. But when I do it, it's good. Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't really think this through now, did you? So that makes no sense. But okay, is that obviously one of the motivating factors for him of what's happening in Syria and Iraq? Look, I mean, oftentimes people say you gotta take these people at their word. So I do. <laughs> when he says that that's one of the motivating things, I, I, who am I to say no? When he says I'm pledging allegiance to the uh, Islamic State, who am I to say, no, you're not? So, I mean, those are factors that go into it. Uh, ISIS and the ideology behind ISIS plays a role. Uh, you know, what Ron Paul or the CIA would call blowback, I guess, plays a role, even though it's irrational. It's certainly not a justification for what he did, but it's saying, well, that's one of the factors that led him to do what he's doing. Now, he also just botches basic facts. Not surprised, because it's a murderous terrorist. Uh, he says Russia and the U.S. are working together in Syria. No, they're not. In fact, they're explicitly at odds, and that's leading to big international problems. You have uh, Russia basically on the side of the Syrian government, and you have the United States more or less on the side of the rebels, certainly more so on the side of the rebels. And there's been you know, huge problems uh, with the United States and Russia and what's going on in there. So he botches ba basic facts. And also remember, we covered the story at the time. You want to talk about somebody who's deeply confused, Omar Mateen? Here's a guy who 
had pledged allegiance to ISIS, like you just heard right there, but in the past he'd also pledged allegiance to Hezbollah. What? <laughs> okay, for those of you who don't know why that's that's a like weird, it they're they're competing. So they're different groups, and one of them is a Shia group, and one of them is you know a, a Salafi jihadist, a Sunni fundamentalist group. That's ISIS. And they literally are fighting. In fact, they're fighting in Syria. <laughs> so for him to, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I pledge allegiance to, uh, to Hezbollah. Anyway, like I said, uh, I pledge allegiance to ISIS. So you, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't. He, he's. I mean, look. Another way to look at this is at least he's at least partly off his fucking rocker. And then there's another angle to it as well. It didn't come across in that tape there, but reports at the time were he had freak he had frequented this gay nightclub where he went and he shot him up. So, he could have been, and there are reports that he was closeted gay, and he had feelings of shame and guilt over that. Uh, why? Because his dad is a known fundamentalist Muslim, and he, you know, poisoned him with fundamentalist Islam and made him believe gays are evil and terrible and wrong and it's the worst thing ever, and then this guy he, who's gay, he didn't know how to deal with those feelings, so... You know, it came out in some ways when he went to the clubs and whatnot, and then uh, he snapped and killed him because he probably felt he was a self-loather of the First Order. So, uh, all of these things probably played a role. I don't deny that it, to some extent, it's blowback, as he keeps saying, stop bombing Syria and Iraq, stop bombing Syria and Iraq, stop bombing Syria and Iraq. So I'm sure that played some role, and we've seen this time and time again where... There are many terrorists who, when they target the West, they say, yeah, this is in response for bad foreign policy on your part. I'm sure that plays a role. I'm also sure fundamentalist Islam plays a role in, in to the extent he pledges allegiance to ISIS, but also because he was reportedly closeted gay and he ended up killing gay people. Why would you target gay people? You know, if, if, if that also doesn't add up. Like, oh yeah, I'm mad about U.S. foreign policy, so gay nightclub is my target. No, if you're mad about U.S. foreign policy, wouldn't you target a military base or something? And by the way, there are people who have done that in the past, and they, they said, yeah, I'm doing this for blowback. In those cases, you could say it's almost pure blowback, whatever. But in this case, it doesn't add up. So it might also be, here's another curveball to throw at you, it's possible he's using this, saying this as a cover-up for the real reason, which is he's closeted gay, doesn't want anybody to know he's gay, you know, and as a result, because he's poisoned by his dad's fundamentalist Islam, and then he acts on it, and we, and that's why he targeted the gay nightclub. He never felt accepted, he's gay, he doesn't want to be gay, he's just just conf conflicted ball of emotions. But either way, he's a horrific, horrific terrorist. He killed so many people, and... Man, it's, it was hard to even listen to that, knowing exactly what went down in that club on that night.